Welcome to the lounge everyone. My name is Subo Redell and today I don't want to talk about why it's so difficult to get the, a great job or the perfect job, but any job at all. Toby, how difficult was it for you finding your job? The sheer amount of times I have been asked this question throughout the last year, time for a video. And I always respond with crazy difficult. I call myself lucky to have a great job. In the past year, I wrote an abundance of applications to which sometimes no one responded and sometimes I got the copy-paste mail reading something like we were very impressed by your application but we found something that fit our requirements even better yes guys we all receive those kinds of emails but let's look at the perspective of the companies first because when it comes to a new job and the new job you want to apply for the perspective of the company is important to understand and many people heavily underestimate the financial risk that comes with hiring someone new and the whole recruiting costs that lie behind it. Having advertisements out there on the, on the market where you want to advertise your job as a company costs money. You want to be visible on many different platforms where your job can be found, which costs money. And eventually you need quite a lot of staff and personnel who carry out the whole recruiting process, which again, costs quite a lot of money. When the company finally finds a few candidates and decides on one of them and lets them into their company, the worst thing that can happen is that this person leaves after three to six months, which happens quite a lot of times and is a huge waste of money because the whole process starts anew and all the costs that have been accumulated this far are now probably doubled. For me, it is actually crazy, but there are so many cases and you can ask any company you, would, you like, they will tell you of such cases where people sign the contract. They sign their work contract and do not show up at work because they signed multiple contracts and then decide for one job they actually will work for. And if you now have the clever idea where you could say, yeah, but it's a signed contract and, and this binds you and they should, they should enforce legal, uh, legal actions. Yeah, they could. Costs more money and the employee won't come back just because you for, for legally force something to happen. It's just another waste of time, money that you could spend into finding someone new that will actually work for you. So many many a times no actions are undertaken and people know that but toby didn't you just a few minutes ago imply that it's so hard to find a job and now you're telling us about people who have multiple job offers and can choose their job and their company freely that is one way of seeing it the other way would be to ask of which jobs we're actually talking about that this is the case for some fields no doubt in my mind. Is this the case for every field, for every job field? I highly doubt it. And if you think so, you fell for the same trap that I fell for. When I was told at university and from broad media, because this is what you hear all the time, all day long, the moment you finish your studies, companies will fight for you. My whole academic career I was bombarded with the, out, with the great outlook that was seemingly ahead of me. Once you finished your studies, companies will fight for you and you will earn great wages because you are so well educated by us, the university. And of course, you are told that so many times, one day you believe it and you're expecting and you're waiting for it enthusiastically. And this, and this is what me and my peers were told in uni so many times. And then reality came. You write your first application, no one even responds. You write your second and third application, 
Ah, they found someone better than you. You continue and continue writing applications until finally you get invited to a job interview. For once, goodness. You expected to, to get an interview every single time, but they don't take the, take the time. Not at all. They screen through, through the application, search for the few keywords they're looking for, and if they're not there, no chance. So you prepare yourself? Have you learned it in uni? Do you research about the company, uh, know the statistics, the numbers, exactly know who, who the people are that you talk to, and if you're pre well prepared and you're enthusiastic, you go in, you want to nail it. And then they ask you, what do you expect from the job? And, or the internship that you're applying for. What do you think that you will do? And you've absolutely no clue, because how could you? You're applying for a job to know how jobs work and how things are going and what you do all day long. And you probably have never heard of the crazy department names that they created for their own departments. So you have no clue what to expect. You want to start to find out. And what do you mean with experience? I'm 23, I just finished my bachelor's degree. Or I'm 25, probably, and finished my master's degree. I was a good student, I carried on through and, and did my studies. What do you mean with experience? How should I have five years of experience with two years in leading positions? How, how, should, that, how should that even work? And in addition to that, in your profile it said, needs a bachelor's degree or a master's degree and now I bring exactly that and it's not enough. It's not enough at all. As you can see, I'm focusing on academic personnel heavily today. The main reason for that is that I do not have any experience with the job market of skilled personnel like carpenters, plumbers or other craftsmen. I mean about those jobs, all you hear as well is you find a job so easily because they are so heavily sought after, um, looked after. But that's the exact same thing you actually hear for academic personnel as well, so what do I know? And right now we're not even talking about a dream job. Don't make me laugh. A job that is pure joy and fulfills you completely every single day is pure happiness and you enjoy it all day long. La da dee da da. So great, amazing job. That doesn't happen. I may be naive, but I haven't given up on this dream completely, I must admit. Just in the beginning of your career, it seems very unlikely and heavily unrealistic. But someday in the future? Probably. Just not in the beginning. We students, who are fresh biologists, lawyers, economists, medics, what do we bring to the table? The shocking thing is, nothing really. In the eyes of a company, we don't really bring anything. We may have the theory and are hopefully clever enough to learn fast enough what our daily practice is, our day-to-day -day job, but we don't know anything yet. And this leaves us at the end of our 20 years of education that we now have a job and now we can start to learn. We're at a complete beginning. Anything that has happened in the 20 years before only made us get into somewhere. But from here on out and forwards, it is a completely new beginning from scratch. Someone with a medicine degree can't really care for their patients. Someone with a law degree cannot simply go to court and argue. And someone with an economics degree cannot simply open up a business. I mean, you can technically open up a business, but let me tell you, if that one is successful, it is not because of their studies. <laughs> not at all. Because they do not prepare you for that in any way, shape or form. And you can tell that this is, that there's something to what I'm saying. If you ask people like that, and ask them how much of what you learned in uni do you use in your day-to-day -day business? And if the answer is anything but 99.9% .9 I do not need and don't use at all, I'd be surprised. I needed to learn that. 
it wouldn't have been as hard hadn't I not been told so many lies in the past. I thought it was a good will and out of, out of motiv motivation and that they knew what they were talking about, which they clearly weren't. Those professors at uni that tell you, who tell you that everyone is waiting for you and which great wages and stuff. As someone who's new to the academic world or to the job world, you believe that. Because you have no clue, you don't know any better. So I want to tell those of you out there who have all those steps in front of them still that it is not easy pickings. You have competition out there and they want to get forward just as much as you want to. And this may be one of the most obvious things to those who have realized this. But for many students of many, many, many different fields who are still being told that the world awaits their grand arrival they don't they don't know this for them it's not clear and if i and if i tell tell them if i tell these things to many of those people uh, they don't believe me at all they don't buy it lastly please don't feel like you're the only one struggling to find the right job a good job or any job at all that fits what you've studied and are looking for right now. It, it is tough for most of us. And for those for whom it is really easy and who they are the rare cases and probably work in the companies of their parents, which is not a great achievement. It is a job, it probably even is a good job, but they didn't really do anything by themselves. Because here comes the saving grace. A strong belief that I hold Dear to my heart, it will pay off. I really believe that the day will come where all the certificates, all the studies, all the degrees you've put yourself through will repay themselves. These rougher times and setbacks will make you tougher. And one day, those degrees will repay themselves. I believe in that. You should too. Because you have what it takes. I hope you enjoyed watching and listening to today's video. If you did and had a few new thoughts here and there, that would make my day. My name is Sobel Rydell and I will see you again next time here in my lounge.